Hey brothers and sisters of Christ, I haven't done a walk and talk in a while, so I thought I'd do one. Um, I came across Luke verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 21, when I did the study recently about uh, rock or sand, the Bible being your foundation. They're asking Jesus, um, uh, telling him that your mother and brethren are, are outside seeking to talk with them. And his answer was, and he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these, which hear the word of God, lowercase w, and do it. And I just thought that was uh, pretty interesting that the Lord just works amazingly like that. Um, brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, being part of the body of Christ is not just hearing the word of God, but doing it. Um, we're supposed to be set apart from the world, and we're supposed to, you know, being different than the lost world. Okay, what's different about us? Uh, we hear the word and obey it. Okay, sometimes I might <laughs> go dark. Um, today it's uh, cloud covered and... Uh, the fog is rolling in upside up the hillside. But, yeah, it's just, God works amazing like that. Um, other thing I want to talk about is uh, getting a lot of slack for the Trinity versus the Godhead again. And, um, gosh, uh, one of the biggest things I want to talk to you about is if a lot of you that's been following King James Video Ministries remember in the past that um, when... Oh, neighbor's dog. <laughs> um, neighbor's dog hit me. <laughs> the uh, the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, everybody uh, was so vehemently, when Brother Brian was like, it's not called the Great Tribulation. It's never called the Great Tribulation as a title. And the title for, the Bible uses is the pre-time of Jacob's trouble. And everybody was on board saying, yes, we should use Bible terms and Bible words. We should not stray from the Bible. Now, when it comes to the Trinity, however, these same people, these same people, you guys stick to the Bible, are now going, well, except when it comes to the Trinity. Then you can stray from the Bible. Then you can use your own words and everything. But when it came to everything else, you guys stick to the Bible. Use Bible terms. They say terms. Use words that are in the Bible. Titles, names, scripture that comes from the Word of God. And where's the Word of God found? In English, it's found in the King James Bible. A lot of people are coming up with Brian, Brother Brian's latest videos at King James Video Ministries. They're coming up saying, well, Bible's not in the Bible. Well, if you open it up, it is. It's within the first few pages of the Bible. Now, if you're saying Bible, the word Bible is not in inspired scripture, uh, the, the word of God, lowercase w, is. And where do we find the word of God? The King James Bible. Someone corrected uh, somebody and used the word Bible has to do with like the meaning of Bible's library because the Bible, the King James Bible, is made up of 66 books. You know, not chapters within a book. They're books put together in a collection, a library. And these people are so desperate, so desperate to justify going outside the Bible using names and titles that aren't found in the Bible. Uh, Trinity is supposed to be a new title. They can try to claim it isn't, but the Catholic Church and all these other false religions, even professing Christian religions, use it as a title for, for God. Why? Because the Bible uses the word Godhead, capital G, as a title. And someone attacked me on this and said, no, it's not a title. And I'm like, in my heart, in my head, I'm like, this guy is, a, is lost. He's got to be a fool. You know? And it's just, it's just, brothers and sisters in Christ, you're going to be coming across a lot of this. Just stand, stand, stand. Make sure your foundation is the written word of God. Always, always the written word of God. Don't let these people pull you away from it with dumb arguments and straw man arguments. Um, one person was arguing with me about, and I say arguing, but I made a couple comments, and then when I get a chance, I'll probably link the gospel message. I was using uh, my phone 
uh, I use my cell phone now as a tablet because I don't have I don't have a cell phone as far as a number uh, to call people with. It's just for emergencies. You can still dial 911 with a cell phone. Um, but I don't have, I'm not good at that stuff when it comes to linking stuff on the phone. Um, but they're trying to say scripture alone. Well, you know, Jesus, you know, when Jesus was here, the apostles followed Jesus. Well, Jesus is God, so his word is the spoken word. I mean, hello? This is such a dumb argument. And they said the early church followed the apostles. Uh, the Bible wasn't completed then. When the Bible was completed, from that point on, people used scripture because they want to know it's God, not man's word, God's word. And then they said, well, so when we go to heaven or when Jesus comes back, he's, he's going to quote scripture. And I almost face palmed. And I'm like, uh, has Jesus come back yet? No. Have we gone to, he are you in heaven right now? <laughs> you know, catching away the body of Christ, caught up. Um, one of the biggest things about Robert Breaker, the closet Catholic, I'm sorry, there's just no other way to say it. He's a Catholic. And his big argument is rapture's not in the Bible. And I'm like, uh, yeah, you're right. Rapture isn't in the Bible. So when you read the Bible and you realize caught up, catching away the body of Christ is in the Bible, why don't you use that term? I hate using the word term. Why don't you use what the Bible says? Why are you part of the system that comes in and back in the past, because he's all about traditions of men, he's all about pleasing men over God, and he's not a Bible believer. He's proven that time and time again. Why aren't we saying, you know what, I was brainwashed. A lot of my uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm going to switch over here, hey, it works. Um, a lot of my brothers and sisters in Christ, they're telling me, hey, thank you, thank you, and I praise God. Not me, God, uh, for giving you guys the encouragement that words have meaning to start looking up what the words actually mean versus taking people's words for it. And a lot of you are coming out and saying, you know what? I was deceived. That word doesn't mean this in the Bible. This word doesn't mean that. This word doesn't always, always mean just one thing throughout the entire Bible. It has different definitions. And you're realizing how much you were deceived. Well, the same thing goes for all these false terms. I'll, I keep, it's kind of hard to get away from terms. People adding to and subtracting from the Bible when it comes to traditions of men. Okay. Uh, well, we've always done it this way. What if we always, you know, did something that was very wicked and vile, and someone comes up and says, Hey, wait a minute. The scriptures say that's wrong. Good example, the Catholic Church. When the Bible started coming out, there's no penance. There's no, you have to do works to be saved. You're saved by God's grace. Well, that's them coming up saying, hey, what you guys are doing is vile and wicked. Telling people they have to do this to be saved, that to be saved. Penance is not in the Bible. Purgatory is not. Same thing's happening today with the Trinity versus the Godhead. Hey, that's not in the Bible. The Trinity teaches three and one. In. The key word is the word in one also it does the reversal and people don't like to admit this it also teaches one in three so you got three in one but that one is also in three that's how they can say god the father god the son and god the holy spirit you get in the bible and you learn i did a video praise the lord for showing it to me i just came across it i didn't come across it god brought me across it and it says that these three are one r and in are two different things the Godhead and the Trinity aren't the same. They're never the same, and they never will be the same. All right? But to encourage the brethren, um, they're going to keep coming down on us. They're going to just keep, keep coming down on us. And uh, they really, they're just hypocrites is what they are. Because a lot of them, they are so vehemently standing for the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ. And... Now when it comes to the Trinity, they have no problem with straying from the Bible, uh, straying from the Word of God. And it's just, it's tough. It's discouraging because we're seeing a lot of people we love and care about that are falling away. And uh, I was talking with the sister in Christ, uh, talking to a sister in Christ, trying to hold this as I'm walking 
talking to a sister in Christ about apostasy in order to, to the falling away to count and it kind of like we both on the same page and she kind of opened my eyes and I opened her eyes a little bit and when it comes to the falling away and apostasy you had to be originally standing for truth so if you have someone who's standing for the Godhead body soul and spirit and then they're like well maybe it's the Trinity and they fall away and say it's the Trinity God in three persons that's apostasy that's falling from a standing point but if they always taught the Trinity God in three persons and you know God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit using words like triune um, it's a triune God and all this and that's what they preach from the very beginning they don't believe in body soul and spirit they believe they're all separate and they'll say they don't but they do they believe that all three of them are separate lowercase g gods that make up the capital G God that's what they truly believe and if that's what they believe to begin with it's not a falling away they're not in apostasy because they were never at that standing point they never were um, so just some things I'm going with through um, thank you for your prayers brothers and sisters in Christ I keep doing the left side because my arm gets tired <laughs> uh, I'm trying to get back in shape um, but yeah thank you for your prayers thank you for everything that you, you the, the body of Christ does for one another not me just me but uh, that you're helping brothers and sisters in Christ out uh, just be encouraged to always 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 use the Bible as your final authority as your foundation make sure your your house <laughs> you because your temple is a body your your body is a temple for the Holy Ghost but it's not just you but it could also be your home uh, make sure the foundation is on the rock the uh, Word of God which is today comes to you in English in the King James Bible and people are nitpicking, you know, which one, 1611, or, it's King James, is King James Bible. Okay. And if you go and do the research on all the revisions, they didn't change the Word of God. It was a lot of spelling errors and the grammar and the font style and stuff like that. It wasn't them changing the Word of God itself. Um, so, but this is my morning walk I take every morning with... Victoria I give her a good long walk in the morning so when there's like days that look like this then I don't really get to get out too much it's not a bad day to walk on the beach but all the tides are kind of off so tides like first thing in the morning or <laughs> like late at night um, so but I like doing this walk it's always good to get out and walk brothers and sisters in Christ uh, I guess there is no angle. <laughs> there it goes. Uh, it's good to get out and uh, talk with the Lord and go for walks. Um, just really go for walks. So this is just something that really hit me. Um, the hypocrisy that's going on. Uh, you have people saying that, you know, I'm a Bible believer and I believe that, you know, it's God's Word is our foundation and Scripture alone. And then they turn around and defend the, the Trinity vehemently when none of the the words that they're using for the Trinity um, the doctrine and belief is not in the Bible it's not in the Bible at all and the same thing with the Great Tribulation you know they keep bringing in their own titles their own words men's words sand if you remember the last study and they're basically building their house on sand and it's gonna fall apart and it'll be totally totally destroyed like that uh, study we just did because um, they're not going to Jesus and hearing his word and obeying it because the first one likens the house to um, someone who goes to Jesus and they hear his words and they obey him and your house is built on a rock brothers and sisters in Christ that's what our house is supposed to be built on but they're not going to Jesus they're going to men they're going to the world they're going to Satan sometimes if not most of the time and they're not hearing the words of Jesus because they're not going to Jesus they're not sticking with his perfect written word and they're not obeying it we as brothers and sisters of Christ can preach truth 
They can hear truth. People can hear the words of Jesus through us. But they don't listen to us. They don't do it. They don't come to Jesus. And that's why you came out, Satan was able to come out with these Bible perversions. That's why Satan was able to infiltrate all these so-called Christian movements, like the Babel building system, and how he was to infiltrate Trinity into these, these so-called Christians and take them away from the Godhead. Honestly, I was raised in a Babel building, and I did a video recently showing how it's totally to uh, run down, boarded up. It's uh, just not in a... They probably moved. I think someone told me they moved to like a smaller place or something that's cheaper to keep up. But that building, it's like... I was taught, I was never told about the Godhead. The word Godhead was never used. It was always Trinity. Trinity this, Trinity that, Trinity this. And when I came, God brought me to my knees, brought me to the true gospel found in the King James Bible, the Bible version issue to absolute truth. That's when I started learning about things that I never learned about because of all these false words and men's words coming in to take you away from God's word. Uh, then I learned about Godhead. I never heard about the time of Jacob's trouble. It's always been the Great Tribulation. Never heard of the, the, the true title, the time of Jacob's trouble. Never heard of it. And you just, I started learning a lot of things. And when you stick with the Bible, and yeah, I've learned through some good Bible teachers, which brings me to another part. Like I said, it's just a walking, talking video. But yeah, um, stick to the Bible stick stick to the Bible but um, the other part that's also been weighing on my heart brothers and sisters in Christ is a sister in Christ brought to my attention that um, like brother Brian at King James Video Ministries uh, I've been a little guilty of it too because I at, at one time I was really like Brian you need to put out those videos I, I'm looking forward to those videos I need those videos and I was newly saved but brothers and sisters in Christ they were leaving patron which you know, it's their choice. And, um, but bottom line, you need to get to a point where you're doing your own Bible studies. Get yourself a Webster's 1828 dictionary, a Strong's Concordance. Um, I've got paperback for emergencies. Power goes out up here, and God really says, hey, you were doing that study, keep it going. Uh, or start a new one, because most of my studies are done on the computer. So he's like, well, start a new one, keep those studies going. But you have a program on the computer that has the Webster's 1828 Dictionary, Strong's Concordance. And you sit there and you take a passage and you start looking up other passages that have the same words. See if they have the same meaning, parallel, definitions to words that are based off the King James Bible. That's why I use the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. And, you know, you need to be doing your own studies. Um, I guess we can start walking back up. Um... You need to be doing your own studies. You need to be relying on the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, your rock. Okay, um, it's not enough to listen to it. Uh, you got to obey it. You got to live it. You got to stand for it. So this is <laughs> there it goes. So I don't know how good this video is going to turn out, but just want to encourage the brethren: don't rely on a man. Okay, Brother Brian takes vacation or he takes some time off to spend with his family. Um, that's no justification for, um, you know, turning your back on them. Because most of the people that are doing that are people that don't seem to get the concept, not concept, the absolute truth that you are supposed to be studying the Bible for yourself. And you're not supposed to be relying on other men to do the work for you. And Brian's always pushed that. He's never said you come to me to learn about the Bible. And I want to put that out there that I'm saying the same thing. I want to encourage people. I'm thinking of doing a video about uh, see King James Video Ministries. I've linked it. I have it in my um, on my YouTube channel about I'm saved now. What he did a great video. Okay, you get saved. What do you do now? Well, you got to learn about prayer. Okay, one of the big parts of this ministry is prayer. Um, you got to learn how to pray to the Lord. Okay. God the Father through Jesus Christ, but you got to learn how to pray. It's not something that you do repetitively. You don't just say, okay, you know, Jesus, I love you. Thank you for your word every time you pray. Uh, he wants a personal relationship. 
but you got to learn that first that I kind of skipped it, but you need to have a King James Bible. You need to know what God's perfect written word in your hand is in English. It's a King James Bible, the word of God. Okay, now that you have it, you need to read it. Um, but remember, we just learned that reading it's not enough. So as you read it, you study it, which is what I'm trying to tell you. You need to have your own studies going. Then you learn prayer. At the same time, you learn all three of those and prayer, because you use prayer to say, Lord, I don't get this. What does this mean? Can you open it up to me? And um, then it goes into what true worship is. You talk about what true worship is, godly music, old hymns that bring glory to God, not to your flesh. And um, gosh. then you talk about spiritual sacrifice, sanctification. It goes from just reading. It's not just reading the Word of God and studying it, but living it, sanctification. It's a great study I'll link below. But right now, I'm being... Let's see if I can do this right. I used to feed these guys carrots. I had permission from the owners. And uh, now it's been a long time because she put up a sign because kids were feeding them weeds that were making them sick. So I'm glad they're doing better. Uh, I love horses. Dogs are still my favorite animal. <laughs> oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. When it comes to having a pet, I've always had a dog. So I don't want to be lying because in a future video I might say something different and they'll say, you're a hypocrite. Um, my favorite animal has always been a turtle. Um, sea turtle is the number one, but turtles in general, favorite color is green, turtles are green. It's not a coincidence. And I know not all turtles are green. But um, when it comes to pets, I've always loved having at least a dog. Um, but I also like horses. But yes, straight for there for a bit. You need to have your own studies, brothers and sisters in Christ. Got to do your own studies. Stay in the Word of God. That's part of fellowship with the Lord. And it's going to make me walk backwards. It's, all, it's part of your fellowship with the Lord. Okay? You got to have your... your Walk with the Lord. That, to me, is walking with the Lord. Um, reading the Bible, studying it, prayer, um, true worship with your mouth and with your life, and sanctification. All right. uh, clean up your life. Uh, be able to encourage the brethren. Just really, really encourage the brethren to do the same. But don't be relying on a man. And... Uh, I usually always feed these guys too. <laughs> but don't rely on a man. Hey, brothers and sisters Christ, rely on God. Uh, make sure your foundation, your rock, is Jesus Christ and his perfect written word and keeping his perfect written word. That's how that rock is. There is no, okay, I have Jesus, but I'm not going to read the word that much. Then you're not on a rock. Well, I believe in Jesus and I, I, I read his word all the time, but I'm not going to obey it, then you're not on a rock. It takes all three to be on that rock. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit in you, reading and studying the word of God, hearing God's words, and living him, obeying him. If you want to be on that rock, that's what it requires. Now, people are probably going to use this against me. Um, if I fall, it's because I'm walking backwards. Probably use this against me, but bottom line, I'm not saying you have to do this to be saved. I'm talking about when you're once, once you're part of the body of Christ, if you want your foundation to be a solid, solid rock, no cracks, nothing breaking up, you need to do all three of those things. You need to, make sure, you need to come to Jesus, make sure that Jesus is in you, the Holy Spirit, and you need to make sure that you're staying in His Word every day. And you need to make sure that you're doing your best to sanctify your life and to live God's Word. Not just standing for major doctrine, which is important, but you need to have that sanctified life. You need to see that changed life. You know, uh, Brother and sister in Christ use the term clean house. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, just make sure you keep cleaning house all the time. So, I love my brothers and sisters in Christ out there. Hopefully this wasn't, this was okay walk and talk. Just uh, wanted to talk with you a little bit without it being just hardcore. There's nothing wrong with it. Bible open. I was going for a walk. I had some things on my heart and mind. Just wanted to share it with you. So 
I love my brothers and sisters in Christ out there. Stay in, stand, stand for the Bible. Make sure you're doing your own Bible studies and don't let these fake arguments and worldly words sand. I'll keep coming back to that rock versus sand. Uh, the sand of the world, the wisdom of the world, words of the world. Uh, don't let them deter you from the Word of God. Okay, You're going to have people that come in and they're going to have like snakes and they're going to be double tongued they're going to be they're going to be really smooth as they're talking and it might sound good but bottom line brothers and sisters Christ if it's not in the bible ignore them rebuke them then ignore them hey i'm a king james bible believer it's whatever's in god's word that's what matters then if they're using god's word make sure they're using it correctly look up the definitions do your own studies if someone says something don't take their word for it uh, verify, 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 research, you know, you got to do research and study and verify if you don't want to be deceived. You cannot just pick a guy out there like, especially someone like Robert Breaker or Edward P.F. or um, uh, Steve Anderson or any of these guys, even Brian, you can't pick a guy out there and say, okay, whatever he says, it's got to be true. You don't do that. Well, I'm running into people. Uh, but yeah, just make sure you're doing what's right. So grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ be with you.